talking about the diversion works in the fourth unit we have finished three major uh, units one is the reservoir planning and the other is the gravity dams then about the earth dams and uh, uh, spillways then even in the diversion works also diversion headworks we have finished uh, like what are the various types of diversion headworks weir barrage what is the difference between a weir and a barrage and what is the layout and various components of a diversion network functions of each and every component of the diversion network then causes and failures of the weirs and barrages on a permeable foundation silt ejector and silt excluder this part we have already finished unit 4a has been finished in unit 4b weirs are permeable foundation more particularly uh, we were concentrating on the creep theories and uh, the design of uh, uh, weir on the permeable foundation using this creep theory this is a fourth unit so in this fourth unit also uh, we explained about the blaise creep theory in the previous class along with uh, the problems or the limitations of the blaise creep theory then uh, lens weighted creep theory also uh, we have seen then coslas theory is left i believe coslas theory and design principles these are the two things uh, which are left in this unit we try to take two three classes and try to finish um, these leftover topics of the unit 4 also the first midterm examinations have not yet been uh, started but um, for the first two units or two and a half units you will have the syllabus for your first midterm examination okay so uh, we are on permeable foundation is a continuation part we have been looking at the, the aim of this topic is to introduce the theories of percolation so what is this darcy's law what is the hydraulic gradient theory also blaise creep theory we need to explain what are the limitations of this blaise creep theory and making use of the blaise creep theory how do you find the pressures at different points along the permeable foundation the design criteria and making use of the blaise creep theory at various uh, sections uh, how to find the thickness okay then what are the limitations of the blaise creep theory and to explain the lens weighted creep theory then about the coslas theory the application of the coslas theory uh, for the design of uh, weir and a permeable foundation by the use of equations or curves and to explain the corrections for the exit gradient correction for floor thickness correction for mutual interference of piles correction for the slope and method of independent variables is used for getting the solution for these uh, corrections also just to have a recap of what we have uh, studied in this fourth unit maybe it has been like more than a month so some of you or most of you must have been concentrating on the third year second semester examinations and you must have uh, really left this so a uh, few minutes we try to just discuss what we have covered in this fourth, uh, fourth unit theories of percolation we have seen what is this theory is a theory of percolation darcy's law we have seen which gives you that the velocity is directly proportional to the gradient h by l so velocity v is equal to k into h by l hydraulic gradient hydraulic gradient theory in the chief danger to a weir is from the underscoring so the reduction of the hydraulic gradient reduces the failure by the underscore this is the main theory hydraulic gradient theory looking at uh, this figure you will be able to recap many things relating to the uh, creep theories so you have a weir wall uh, a weir wall may be having a, uh, a gate or may not be having a crest gate and this weir wall is resting on a permeable foundation the length of this foundation is you can see here ab is the total floor vr downstream side of the vr and uh, l1 l2 and l3 are the lengths from a to c c to e and e to b of the floors and cd which is equal to the d1 the depth of cut off the depth of pile at the upstream and d2 is the depth of pile at the downstream ef ef okay so this is all uh, the uh, a vr with a structure which is resting on a permeable foundation the blaise creep theory we discussed what are the limitations of the blaise creep theory and design criteria to arrive at the thickness at the different points and 
basically the simple principle in the blaise script theory is the length of travel is called the creep length which is equal to the sum of horizontal and vertical lengths of creep if any water particle what uh, is starting moving maybe a point a then it moves it is assumed that it moves along uh, on the floor from a to c then from c to d then takes turn takes turn and from d to c then c to e e to f takes turn f to e and then it passes it travels from e to b so this is what is called the length of travel which is also known as the creep length which has been defined by bly so the loss of head per unit length of the creep h by l is called the creep coefficient 1 by c the reciprocal of this uh, the percolation coefficient is called the coefficient of creep c coefficient of creep c c the thickness of the apron uh, which is required at any point may be calculated like t is equal to 4 by 3 into h by s minus 1 h is the head causing flow at that point and s is the specific gravity of the dam material which is uh, which is which is constructed there some works designed on this principle or on this simple theory failed while others stood this has become a big challenge black creep theory has been uh, working wonderfully well at some points and for some of the other structures though it is designed with the same principle they failed depending on the extent they ignored or took note of the importance of vertical cutoffs piles at the upstream side and downstream ends so accordingly there were several uh, limitations for this black creep theory because it did not make any distinction between the vertical and horizontal creeps so length of creep means it is all the movement of the particle so let it be horizontal let it be vertical there is no separate distinction made by the bly and bly's method holds good as long as the horizontal distance between the upstream and the downstream pile lines is greater than twice the depth this is another limitation and bly did not consider the idea of exit gradient and bly made no distinction between the outer and inner faces of the piles or intermediate piles but according to the later investigations it has been found that the outer faces of the end piles are much more effective than the inner ones and intermediate piles of shorter length than the outer ones are not useful except for the local redistribution of pressure so these are all the limitations of the black script theory then lin also made certain distinction instead of directly taking along the length of travel he has taken the shortest shortest length by the lin weighted creep theory cosra's theory is in continuation in the year 1926 27 some siphons and upper chenab canal designed by the blaise theory gave trouble actual pressure measurements made with the help of pipes inserted into the floors of the two siphons did not show any relationship with the pressures calculated by the bly theory so one said if you make a calculation based on the bly theory and if you go and measure the pressure at that particular point there is no correlation there is no relationship this led to the investigation by kosla and certain observations are made by kosla the outer faces of the end sheet piles are much more effective than the inner faces and the horizontal length of the floor in reducing the hydraulic gradient this is one observation made by the kosla the first observation is you have the end piles this is one pile this is another pile so these two piles have outer face and inner face so the outer faces of these sheet piles are much more effective than the inner face but in the case of bly simply we have taken like d1 plus d1 here also d2 plus d2 they say that it is not like that kosla's made an observation that the outer faces are much more effective than the inner face and the horizontal length of the floor in reducing the hydraulic gradient secondly the intermediate piles of smaller depth than the outer ones are ineffective except for the local redistribution of pressure if we take the intermediate pile see this is the intermediate pile outer pipe i mean this, this is the upstream pile this is the downstream pipe and intermediate pile so if the depth of this intermediate pile is less than the end piles then this will not be effective except for 
local redistribution of pressure then undermining of the floor starts from the tail end this is another observation is he has seen from the tail end the undermining starts is not from the upstream side see the hydraulic gradient the, at the exit called the the exit gradient sometimes for a particular soil which exceeds a certain value the soil particles would move with the flow of water causing progressive degradation of the subsoil resulting in the cavities finally it leads to the failure this is the another observation made by kosra undermining of the floor starts from the tail end it is not from the upstream side it is only from the tail end of uh, of the foundation it will start and if the hydraulic gradient at the exit which is called the exit gradient exceeds certain value then the soil particles would move with the flow of water causing the progressive degradation finally resulting in the cavities leading to the failure it is absolutely essential to have a reasonable deep vertical cut off at the downstream end to prevent undermining so he, he stated the importance of uh, the the downstream pipe the vertical cut off deep vertical cut off must be provided at the downstream end so that the undermining can be prevented because it starts only from the tail end from this downstream side it will start so to avoid that you should have a deep vertical cut off or a deep pile must be provided at the downstream side at the downstream side to prevent the undermining so kosla adopted the method of independent variables what is this independent variable so we try to see is a combination of several things as you have seen in the previous figure uh, we have the upstream pile we have intermediate pile we have the uh, the downstream pile and so on sometimes you know the the floor may be depressed so all these combinations will be there so he adopted the method of independent variable he try to solve one after the other case by case he try to take up kosla bose and can you determine the complete mathematical solution for these applied pressures and exit gradients for different elementary profiles on the wears and permeable foundation so he has taken he has taken the uh, complete mathematical solution for calculating the applied pressure also for the exit gradient for different elementary profiles on the wears and permeable foundation so what is this elementary profiles that he has taken several cases simple cases he has taken solutions were given Uh, for all these simple cases using the method of independent variables by the schrich christoffel transformation a straight horizontal floor of negligible negligible thickness with a pile either at the downstream or at the upstream end of the wear so he has taken case one like this he has taken case one like this so this is a wear wall a wear wall and you have a downstream pile edc the downstream pipe here or A pile may be there only on the upstream side, so your horizontal floor is there, which is a straight horizontal floor. The thickness is neglected, and the pile is there either at the upstream side or at the downstream side of the wear, either on the upstream side or on the downstream side. So this ED or CD is the pile at the downstream side. Similarly, in the figure uh, E1D or C1D is the pile, C1D1 is the pile at the upstream side. The cases are dealt. separately independently similarly straight horizontal floor of negligible thickness with a pile at some intermediate point so you have a pile here i mean you you have a floor uh, this horizontal floor negligible thickness once again and the pile is provided at the middle intermediate point at the intermediate point this is the wear wall the while the pile is here so this may not be the practical cases as you can see combination of all these only may be leading to a complete picture of uh, the foundation of a uh, wear but uh, um, he tried to provide the solution independent cases separate method of independent variables so here he has taken a straight horizontal floor the thickness of this horizontal floor is negligible there is a pile at some intermediate point a pile at the intermediate point next straight horizontal floor depressed below the bed but there is no cut off provided no piles are provided here you can see a wear wall a wear wall and this is the horizontal floor this horizontal floor instead of providing the piles at the upstream middle or at the center the floor is depressed the floor is depressed by a thickness d so this is the depressed floor no cut offs no piles are provided 
either at the upstream or at the downstream or at the intermediate positions. D is the thickness. The floor is depressed here. The floor thickness is depressed. Number four, a horizontal floor with equal pile lines at either end, but no depression of the floor. The, the, the fourth case is that he has taken one upstream pile, one downstream pile, but there is no depression of the there is no depression of the floor. So you have a horizontal floor, and the size of the piles also is equal both at the upstream side and the downstream side. Next, a horizontal floor with no piles, no depression. This is another case. So he has taken horizontal floor is taken. This is the horizontal floor. There is no pile provided uh, at either end. A sloping floor with no piles and no depression. This is another case. Just the difference of uh, case 5 and case 6 is in case 5, you have a horizontal floor. In case 6, you have a sloping floor. In both the cases, there is no depression. There is no pile provided. Case 7 is a vertical pile line with equal or unequal fills on the two sides or no fill at all on the downstream side. So you can see here a pile is there. So this pile ECD is the pile EC. So you have different levels. So these two are not at the same level. So this is the another case. So in general, the actual wear section rarely conforms to any one single elementary profile. So you have one to seven. So these are all the elementary profiles. But uh, if we take actual wear section, this actual wear section will not conform to any of uh, the single ones. Any of the single ones. It's a combination. We usually consists of almost all forms of uh, the things which are mentioned from one to seven. So it may have the floor in one or more steps, one, two or more pile lines of equal or unequal depth. The thickness may be varying. The floor may be depressed, may not be depressed, or at certain locations it may be depressed into the subsoil. So method of independent variables gives a complete solution for each of the profiles. In this method, a complex wear profile is set up into its elementary standard forms. Each elementary form is then treated as independent of the other. The pressures at the key points are then determined with the help of the curves or maybe the formula which is used given by the Kosla et al. Because Kosla, Bose and others have worked on that. So Kosla et al. So the key points are the junction, junction points of the floor and the pile line. The bottom point of the pile line, the bottom and the bottom corners in case of depressed flows. The ex exit gradients are also calibrated. You have different cases like you may have a pile at the downstream end, you may have a pile at the upstream end. Though the actual profile that you take, a wear that you take, it may be a combination of all these, it will be separated into several, a uh, combination of several elementary profiles. For each of the elementary profile, we give the solution based on the curves or based on the equations provided by Kosla. The combination of all these will lead to the final solution for arriving at the pressures at a different points along the length of the floor. The pressures obtained at these key points with the elementary profiles must be corrected. The correction is to be taken up for the mutual interference of piles, which means that there is one intermediate pile, there is another end pile. End pile may be upstream end or downstream end. So there will be interference of these piles. So because of the mutual interference of file, a correction has to be applied. For example, you have two pile lines which are provided at the upstream side and at the intermediate point. So the upstream pile will have the effect on the intermediate pile. Similarly, the intermediate pile will have the effect on the upstream pile as well as on the downstream pile. So this is the mutual interference of the piles. Similarly, correction has to be carried out for the thickness of the floor. This is very, very important. In all the cases we have seen, negligible thickness. We have been mentioning that negligible thickness. So process 3D provides you that assuming that the thickness of the floor is negligible. But in actual practice, we know thickness of the floor can never be uh, zero. So if you consider the thickness of the floor, what correction is to be applied? Uh, so the, um, for, for the pressures which are obtained based on this cost loss theory, right? cost loss theory are to be subjected to the corrections like correction for mutual interference of the pile, correction for the thickness of the floor. Similarly, correction for 
the slope of the floor also if it is not horizontal what is the effect of the slope the floor that also is to be taken the percentage of pressures obtained from the curves are equations for simple forms into which the wear profile is broken up are found to hold good for the assembled profile as a whole subject to the above corrections i repeat once again you will be calculating the pressures at a different points in percentages either by making use of the equations or by making use of the curves this is point number 1 you are we are calculating the percentage of the pressures so these are all calculated for the simple elementary profiles elementary forms like you may be fitting either into the case 1 or case 2 case 3 uh, like this so then these are all individual things then because you are taking the entire profile is broken into several pieces and these pieces are directly fitting into the appropriate elementary profile and getting the solution by making use of this then then they will be clubbed together make a single profile assembled profile as a whole but it has been found that the results that are obtained are well very well matching provided you are making these corrections you are making these corrections i would like to tell you one point here that we when you are considering maybe a, a case one or a case two wherein it is only elementary profile where you don't have any intermediate pile you don't have any depression you don't have any slope negligible horizontal thickness of the floor with the pile either at the upstream side or downstream side either at the upstream side or downstream side so you are taking the cases separately elementary profile with only upstream pile elementary profile and the downstream side separately you are taking the cases but when you are symbol naturally you need to consider the correction because there are two piles now so you need to go for the interference of the piles so what is the correction required to be applied for this mutual interference of the pile similarly thickness of the floor is assumed uh, negligible in all the cases but what correction is to be applied similarly if there is a floor with the slope what is the correction so subject to these corrections the assembled profile the assembled profile is found to be correct is found to be correct and because you are taking all the elementary profiles in a simple form trying to clap them trying to clap them so several equations have been provided um, by kosla for these cases number 1 is the straight horizontal floor negligible thickness pile either at the downstream end or at the upstream end of the wear you have two cases here you have two different cases only one pile is there cd ed or cd is the pile here why i say ed or cd because e is the junction point inside and c is the junction point outside are you following this so d is the bottom of the pile whereas e is the junction point inside and c is the junction point on the outside so we are not worried about the outside pressure similarly here also e1 the junction point at the outside c1 is the junction point in the inside is just see these are reversed now c is outside here even is outside here okay so we are interested in calculating the pressure at point e at point d at point d1 at point c1 and so on how to calculate this pressures you are taking a very simple elementary form the elementary form is a straight horizontal floor thickness is negligible pile is provided at the upstream side or pile is provided at the downstream side pile is provided either at the upstream side or at the downstream side then calculate alpha alpha is equal to b by d what is b here so you have the case where you have a wear wall with h head causing flow d is the total length of the horizontal floor length of the horizontal floor d is the thickness of the pipe here also b is the total length of the horizontal floor and d is the thickness of the pipe but you are taking both the cases separately independently either this now stream side pipe or this the stream side pipe not combination at this junction it is not combination so you have a straight horizontal floor thickness is negligible pile is provided either at the downstream end or at the upstream end d is the thickness of the pile and b is the length of the floor calculate alpha alpha is equal to b by d alpha is equal to b by d this is b and this is d b by d calculate lambda as 1 plus square root of 1 plus square root of 1 plus alpha square by 2 1 plus alpha square by 2 calculate the value of alpha So once alpha is known, lambda can be calculated. Lambda can be calculated. If lambda is known, the pressure, the pressure at the point E 
can be calculated by making use of the Schwitch crystal transformation provided by Coase law. Phi e, the pressure at point e, will be equal to one by the cos inverse of lambda minus two by lambda. Lambda is obtained from here. Lambda is a function of alpha. Alpha is b by d, uh, the pi thickness as well as the length of the horizontal flow. So knowing those two things, you have one by the cos inverse of lambda minus two by lambda gives you the pressure at point e phi e. Then pressure at d phi d, pressure at d at this point phi d will be equal to one by pi cos inverse of lambda minus one by lambda. What is the difference? Here it is lambda minus two by lambda. Here lambda minus one by lambda. To get the pressure at point c one phi c one. To get the pressure at this point, phi c1 and upstream z, it will be 100 minus phi d. Similarly, phi d1 will be 100 minus phi d. So the curves for the phi d, phi e are given for 1 by alpha, which is equal to d by b of 0 to 1, and phi c1 and phi c, phi d1 can be computed from these equations. So these are the coarse loss curves. We try to understand the coarse loss curves. These curves may be applicable for three particular cases. The first case is that you have an upstream pile, you have a downstream pile, or you may have a depressed floor. The depressed floor is with a flow depression of D here. B is the length of horizontal floor, H is the head causing flow, and D is the depression. D is the depression here. Okay. In this case, you have an upstream pile. So for this upstream pile, D is the Thickness of the vertical cut off for the pile and B is the horizontal floor and H is the head causing flow. This is the water surface, this is the wheel wall. This is the wheel wall. Similarly, the other case is that the pile, pile is on the downstream side. So C D here. E E E D or C D on the downstream side. So for this case, you have B the total length of horizontal floor and D the thickness of the vertical cutoff. The thickness of the vertical cutoff. So it is given for values of 1 by alpha, which is equal to d by b. We know very well the length of the horizontal floor is more compared to the length of the cutoff. As a result, b by d is greater than 1. So if you take 1 by alpha, d by b will be up to equal to 1. So you have 0, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, and 1.0, which is taken here on this x-axis. On the y-axis, you have the scale for phi, which is which is equal to the pressure, which is equal to, as a percentage, the pressure at that, point, at that particular point by h into 100. So the depressor, for the depressor floor, you have a curve, and for and d, and for phi d, and phi e, these are the curves. Instead of calculating from the equation, you may use these curves also. Once you know, once you know the value of, uh, uh, alpha, calculate 1 by alpha, corresponding to the 1 by alpha, say 1 by alpha is 0.2, drive vertical line at 0.2, sorry, drive vertical line at 0.2 to cut this phi d curve, say maybe it is cutting here, correspondingly what is the value of phi, you can calculate, that is the percentage of pressure you are getting directly, okay, so you will be, for example, it is say 0.25 or 0.3, so corresponding to the 0.3, drive vertical line, to cut the phi curve at this point. So this is cut, cutting here. Dry a horizontal line to get the value of the phi e, to get the value of phi e. So this is how the curves would be uh, red. The curves would be red. Similarly for the depressed floor also, the, this is the curve which is given here. The depressed floor, it, it is given here. Like D and D dash is given. You'll be able to get the pressures. You'll be able to get the pressures. Straight horizontal floor of negligible thickness with the pile at some intermediate point. In the earlier case, we have seen the depressive floor, you have seen the pile at the downstream end, uh, CDE, and the pile at the upstream end, C1, D1, E1. Now, you have uh, a pile at the intermediate point, at some intermediate point, look at the uh, sketch. So you have a horizontal floor, but this horizontal floor, at some point, the pile e, ED or CD is available. This is the pile intermediate point. So the location of this inter point may, intermediate point may be taken with respect to the total length of the horizontal floor. If B is the total length of the horizontal floor, the location of the intermediate pile is, say, B1. B1. So B 
the total length of the horizontal floor b1 length up to which up uh, length at which uh, uh, this intermediate pile is located calculate alpha 1 b1 by d alpha 2 b2 by d what is b2 the remaining portion this is b1 and this is b2 the remaining portion so b1 by um, d and b2 by d gives you alpha 1 and alpha 2 l1 will be equal to square root of 1 plus alpha 1 square and l2 will be equal to square root of 1 plus alpha 2 square then lambda 1 will be l1 minus l2 by 2 since we know alpha 1 and alpha 2 calculate l1 l2 once you know the values of l1 and l2 lambda 1 can be calculated as l1 minus l2 by 2 and lambda is l1 plus l2 by 2 then phi is the pressure will be at the point e the pressure at the point e will be equal to 1 by pi cos inverse of lambda 1 minus 1 by lambda and pressure at c will be 1 by pi cos inverse of lambda 1 plus 1 by lambda minus 1 here plus 1 by lambda and at d phi d will be 1 by pi cos inverse of lambda 1 by lambda so lambda will be calculated or lambda 1 will be calculated with respect to the values of l1 and l2 l1 minus l2 by 2 l1 plus l2 by 2 L1 and L2 are calculated based on alpha 1 and alpha 2. Alpha 1 and alpha 2 are functions of the horizontal length of the floor and the location of this intermediate pile B1 and B2 with respect to the depth d, the depth d of the cut. So correspondingly, the curves are given here. The curve may not be appearing uh, too good, but you will be able to get the pressure, the values of the phi d will be calculated here, and the values uh, of phi c is given. And on this side, on this side, it is given from zero to the ratios are given like zero to point one. Curves are given for phi c for b one by b varying from zero to one, and alpha will be equal to b by d varying from zero to thirty and beyond, and beyond up to infinity. Another set of curves are given for phi d uh, for b one by b varying from point five to one, and alpha varying from zero to thirty and up to infinity. So the principle of reversibility of a flow is made used. to reduce the number of curves required and if the direction of flow is reversed other other conditions remaining the same the flow net pattern also can remain unaltered thus if the percentage pressures are known for the sheet piles at the downstream end at the key points like e d c and if the flow is reversed the points will be correspondingly c1 d1 and e1 respectively and the percentage of pressures at these latter points will be under minus the pressure Of the former point, once we calculate and you make a problem, uh, you'll be able to understand better about this. Simply, whatever is the pressure that you have taken for the reversal, it will be E becomes C1, D becomes D1, and C becomes C E1. What we have seen in the earlier case also. So, correspondingly, at these later points, the pressure will be under minus, minus the percent of pressure at the former points. Third one is the straight horizontal floor depressed below the bed, and there is no cut off provided in the figure you can see here um, b is the total length of the floor the entire floor is depressed by a thickness d by a thickness d in which case the pressures will be uh, calculated of course phi d and phi, phi d1 in both the cases will be same and uh, phi d1 will be equal to phi d minus 1 and phi d1 will be equal to under minus this because the reverse flow when you are taking uh, under minus the pressure at the point d1 will be equal to the pressure at the opposite side opposite side For the standard form, the exit gradient. So, how to calculate this exit gradient? We already seen uh, when the uh, ideal gradient is changing um, from upstream to the downstream portion. At a particular point, it crosses it, it crosses or it reaches some critical value. Then it is called the exit gradient. Also, Kostra identified uh, that the degradation starts only from the tail end. So, for a standard form of a floor of length b with negligible thickness. And a vertical cutoff of depth d at its downstream end, the exit gradient G E is given by this formula. G E is the exit gradient h by d into one by pi root lambda. Please note h by d one by square pi into root lambda. H you know head causing flow. D is the the depth of the cutoff, and then lambda which will be equal to function of alpha. Given in this case as one plus square root of one plus alpha square by two, and alpha will be equal to b by d. Alpha will be equal to b by d. So for a depressed depressed floor, this will be the exit gradient will be point eight four by d into phi d one into h. Therefore, it is essential uh, to provide a vertical cutoff at the downstream. Small thing is missing here. Um, 
when the when the value of d is becoming zero what will happen when the value of becoming d is becoming zero when g is tending to zero that means you are not providing a cut off either at the upstream side or downstream side then the exit gradient is becoming infinity infinity so it is essential to provide a pile at the downstream end of the floor the effect would have the cut off must be measured below the scaffold bank so calls are given for the values of lambda versus alpha also pi root lambda versus alpha for uh, for the value of alpha varying from 0 to uh, 50 so this is how the exit gradient d the upstream end and you have the total length of the horizontal floor b and you have 1 by scale for 1 by pi root lambda scale for alpha scale for alpha so alpha versus 1 by pi root lambda curve alpha versus 1 by pi root lambda curve and alpha versus lambda curve so these are the two things alpha will be equal to v by d lambda will be equal to 1 plus square root of alpha square by 2 and the exit gradient will be equal to h by d into 1 by pi root lambda so from the curve for a different values of alpha you will be able to get the value corresponding value of the pi root lambda once you get the pi root lambda substitute here you will be getting the exit gradient okay so uh, more clearly it is given here the exit gradient so alpha versus 1 by pi root lambda and alpha versus lambda curves accordingly alpha is b by d lambda is 1 plus square root of alpha 1 plus alpha square by 2 and gg the exit gradient is h by d into 1 by pi root lambda 1 by pi root lambda so having uh, arrived at the pressures for the independent uh, elementary forms maybe with upstream side alone from the downstream side alone maybe intermediate pile alone or a depressed floor alone we need to go for the combination when you are taking the combination there will be certain corrections that are required to be applied in the standard forms with vertical cut off the thickness of floor is assumed to be negligible this is what we have done the percentage of pressure at the junction points e and c pertain to the level at the top of the floor whereas the actual junction points are at the bottom of the floor that is the reason why we assume that the thickness of the floor is negligible initially we assumed the thickness of the floor is negligible but more particularly if you see there will be certain thickness of the floor whether you need to consider the pressure at the junction point at the top of the floor or at the bottom of the floor of the junction point this is the question at the top of the floor or at the bottom of the floor of the junction point is the question so the percentage of pressures at the junction points e and c pertain to the level at the top of the floor so e is you see here this is the thickness of the floor this is the thickness of the horizontal floor and you have a vertical cut off so when you have a vertical cut off like this what is this junction point for the simple calculations e is a junction point at the top of the floor similarly c also at the top of the floor but in actual practice you have to the actual junction is c1 in the figure the actual junction is c1 so the percentage of pressure at the actual points of e1 and c1 are interpolated by assuming the linear variation from e to d and c to t in these cases so what we say we calculate the pressure at the junction point at this top but to get the pressure at a junction point c1 we will simply make a interpolation between c to d or d to c from between d to c so in this case it is from e to uh, c e a to e to d okay so the figure more clear like you need to uh, this is the thickness of the uh, floor and this thickness of the floor has been initially assumed negligible we have calculated the pressures at the points of c and d while taking the cap pressures at c and d we made a assumption that the thickness of the floor is negligible since there is thickness of the floor you need to make a correction you need to make a correction suppose if t1 is the thickness of the floor at this point then what you have to do you have to calculate the pressure at point c based on the kosler curve and assume that from d to c you have a linear variation so what is the value at c1 you can what is the value at c1 you can but that means corresponding to a thickness of t1 you have to reduce from the total value that you obtained at c similarly at d also here once again at e corresponding to e to d you take corresponding to e to d you take and you need to obtain the pressure at point e1 
and this side also corresponding to c to d you have linear variation and you need to have the simple interpolation to get the value of this is c1 at the end pile also at maybe the thickness is varying say t1 t and t2 so correspondingly uh, from e to d you take the pressure corresponding to a thickness of t2 what would be the pressure at e1 similarly the outside so for the piles at the upstream end the correction for c1 will be like 5d minus 5c divided by the thickness divided by the depth of the cut of d1 multiplied by the thickness t1 at the uh, t1 is the thickness of the floor where t1 is the floor thickness d1 is the depth of the pile hence the percentage of pressure at c1 will be equal to 5c1 which will be equal to 5c plus 5d minus 5c by d1 into t1 just it is the additive value that we have taken similarly for the intermediate pile it will be 5e minus 5d by d into the thickness t the thickness t so correction for c1 5d minus 5c into t by d and percent of pressure will be equal to 5e1 will be equal to 5e minus 5c into t by d so for a pile at the downstream end the correction for the floor thickness would be like 5e1 will be equal to 5e5e1 minus 5e minus 5d into t by t2 by d2 for the interference of the piles you have different pile pile lines which are provided below the floor maybe the upstream pile maybe the downstream pile maybe the intermediate pile also so there will be effect of the piles from one pile to the other pile since you have a pile line here another pile line here one more pile line here maybe like upstream downstream and intermediate pile so there will be interference of these piles for example if you take upstream pile upstream pile so this upstream end pile will have the inter interference on the intermediate pile similarly the intermediate pile will have the interference on the upstream end pile and the intermediate pile will have the influence or on the downstream end pile and so on the, and so on so you have the mutual interference is to be calculated with respect to, to the original location of the pile to the nearest pile if there is if there is no intermediate pile from end to end piles what is the mutual interference you need to calculate so this is how over the piles like pile number 1 and pile number 2 pile number 3 why we say 1 2 3 it is easy uh, to make a mention in our calculations so mutual interference uh, for the correction of effect of pile number 2 on pile 1 pile 2 on pile 1 similarly effect of pile 2 on pile 3 also you need to calculate so the correction uh, to the percentage of pressure for the mutual interference of the piles is given by the simple equation correction c would be equal to 19 into square root of d1 by b1 into d plus d by d so b1 the distance between the piles b the total um, depth of the impervious floor d the depth of the pile on which the effect of another pile uh, of depth capital d is to be determined small d capital d because you have two piles you have two piles capital d is the depth of the pile on whose effect on the neighboring pile of depth small d is required so both small d and capital d are to be determined the correction is positive for the points if the rare and the negative for the points ahead of the direction of flow we are moving we are calculating from 2 to 1 it will be positive from 2 to 3 moving ahead it will be uh, negative so the effect of the interference of a pile is to be determined only for the face of adjacent pile towards the interfering pile so you can't take 1 to 3 there is no interference 1 2 2 then 2 to 1 then 2 to 3 and 3 to 2 so pile 2 will interfere with the downstream with the downstream phase of pile 1 and upstream phase of the pile 3 so the correction does not apply to the effect of outer pile on an intermediate pile if the intermediate pile is equal to or less than the outer pile in depth and is at a, at a distance less than twice the depth of the outer pile this is a small exemption so we don't need to calculate the interference of the pile or there will be no effect provided this condition is satisfied what is the condition that the distance is less than the twice the depth of the outer pile distance between the intermediate pile and the end pile and the other thing, thing is that if the intermediate pile is equal to are less than the outer pile in its depth then also you, you don't need to consider the effect of mutual interference on the piles the third correction which is required to be applied is on the slope 
So a correction in percentage of the pressure is to be applied for a sloping floor. Usually, uh, all our elementary problems are with horizontal thickness, with horizontal floors. Further, we assume that the thickness is negligible. So we have made a correction for actual thickness of the file. We have made a correction for the interference of one pile to the other. The third correction is if you have a pile with the slopes, if you have a floor with the slopes, so a correction in percentage of pressure is to be applied for a sloping floor. The correction is positive for the downslope and a negative for the upslope with reference to the direction of flow. So the correction is applicable to the key points of the pile line at the beginning and at the end of the slopes, at the beginning and at the end of the slope. So how to make this correction? It is given directly, the correction uh, in terms of the percentage of pressure it is given um, because the correction also is a function of uh, slope that is vertical to horizontal ratio of the slope. So they are clearly specified like for one in one slope, you have a correction on the pressure about 11.2%, one in two, 6.5%, uh, one in three, 4.5%, one in four, 3.3%, and one in five, 2.8%, and one in six, 25 and so on. So the correction values are to be multiplied by a factor equal to Bs by B dash, where Bs is the horizontal length of the floor. Though it is sloping, take the horizontal length is the Bs, and B dash is the distance between the two points between which the slope is located. Accordingly, you need to calculate the corrections. We have seen uh, about the very interesting course class uh, theory. So based on this course class theory, actually the, um, the study of the course class has been initiated because of the failure of certain um, uh, floors, uh, particularly uh, in, uh, in upper chain of canal, though they have been designed strictly with the Bly script theory. Some of the so, uh, uh, floors are failed, some of the floors are working. What is happening? What is the difference? That's how uh, the Kosala uh, made his study, made his investigation, and he found that uh, very interesting points that uh, there should be a clear distinction between upstream uh, piles to the downstream piles, and all piles are not equal. Intermediate piles, if they are not uh, more depth, if they are not having more depth than the downstream pile, they become ineffective except for uh, some local redistribution of pressure and so on. So based on that, he tried to evolve uh, a theory known as the Kosas theory or the curves to arrive at the pressure at different points of the piles, so which appear to be more and more methodical uh, to calculate the pressures on the horizontal floor. Of course, uh, he, he made use of uh, the schritt christoffel uh, transformation uh, technique for uh, providing the solution uh, for arriving at the percentage pressure at uh, different points of the pile locations. In this process, method of independent variables has been chosen, which means that he has taken all elementary forms, elementary or simple forms, like you have a horizontal floor of negligible thickness with only upstream pile, which may not be the practical case. Similarly, only downstream pile, which may not be once again a practical case. However, if you join together, like you have a horizontal pile with the horizontal floor with pile and upstream side and pile on downstream side is a more practical case. So. If you take any practical case, it may be the combination of almost all cases that have been listed. So for each case, for each simple elementary form, uh, a solution has been provided in terms of an equation as well as in terms of a curve. So from that curve, you know the value of alpha or you know the value of alpha 1 or 1 by alpha. Correspondingly, from the curve, you will be able to elevate the pressure. So the pressure may be at point C, at point D, or at point E. Maybe from the other side, if it comes, it may be at point E1, D1, or C1. Accordingly, the pressures are calculated. Since you are taking the combination of all the elementary forms, there could be possibility of several corrections. The correction for the thickness of the floor, because in the earlier cases of elementary uh, forms, and the thickness has been totally neglected. So if thickness is taken, what exactly is the pressure at the junction point? The pressure at the junction point is different from the pressure which has been calculated based on the Kosas curve. Because the Kosas curve has assumed that the, the, the thickness is negligible and hence the pressure that you are taking is only at the top point. But exactly the, the junction point to, get, to, uh, to calculate this pressure, you need to make a linear interpolation. Similarly, since you are taking not an elementary form or a practical form, so there will be several pile lines which are coming like pile line 1, pile line 2, pile line 3. So you need to make uh, the correction for the mutual interference of the piles. Similarly, there may be a case where the floor may not be 
horizontal. So when you have a sloping flow, how what type of correction is to be given? So all the three have been discussed in this course last theory. So the calculations which are made for calculating for arriving at the pressure at different points at different points would uh, directly uh, provide you a basis for calculating the or designing the thickness of the floor at that particular point. So this is what the Kosla's uh, uh, theory is, and we try to take up one problem.